Hey, good morning, everyone. Today is Tuesday, January the 19th, and this is your Daily Word of Encouragement. You know, when God created the world, uh, if you go back to the Genesis account, um, he had a response, uh, a reaction to all that he had made. Every day when he made something is as brilliant and as amazing as our universe is, uh, he would look at all and say, it's good. Now, you might think good's kind of an understatement if you've ever enjoyed uh, a beautiful view in the mountains or a beautiful sunrise or sunset or the majesty of the ocean or even just some of the, the images that we've seen of uh, different parts of space before. You might think good just doesn't quite do it. Um, but certainly when the Lord uses it and he's seen everything that, that has ever existed and he's the, the, the source of everything that's ever existed, um, it suffices when God says, it's good. And in fact, the Bible tells us over and over again that all that God has created is good. Uh, the problem is, of course, that what we've done with this creation, what we've done with all the good gifts that he's given to us, is we've the one, we're the ones who have tainted it and made it bad through the choices that we've made. But what's even more fascinating to me is when you go on and read through the account of Genesis, is that every part of creation that uh, God makes and creates designs, he labels as good until he gets to us. The only part of creation that was actually created in his image, to, to bear his likeness. Um, and when he creates mankind, he looks at it and says, it's very good. So out of all the things that God ever made, everything that God ever created, the, the, the crowning achievement, the masterpiece of God's design was you and me. And that's a humbling thought. I mean, it shouldn't fill you with great pride and arrogance and think, yeah, look at me. I'm very good. I'm better than anything else in God's creation. It should be humbling. Because when you think about all that God created, to know that you and I are the one piece of creation that was made in his image, the one part of it that he called very good, it should humble us. Uh, it should make us even more keenly aware of how 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 we disappoint God when we, as the ones who were created in his image that could know him and relate to him, have let him down because of our sin. And as we've fallen short of that glory that God had for us in mind for us when he first created us. And that's what we were talking about this past Wednesday, this whole process of discipleship, of growing in Christ. It's God's work in us that, that we allow him to do and that we partner with him. It's, just a, it's, a, it's a lifelong process of remaking us, taking what was broken um, what was damaged by sin, and remaking us in the image of Christ to become that best version of ourselves that, that God has always seen. And the verse I wanted to read today, um, it's a little bit longer, um, but it really speaks to what happened to us and that, and what how we how we damaged that image, but what, what God is intent on doing as he remakes us in Christ Jesus. So uh, the passage I want to read to you comes out of uh, the book of Ephesians of the New Testament, chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. Paul writes there, he says, as for you, meaning all of us, specifically the Ephesian Christians that he's writing to, but it applies to all of us. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins, in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving of wrath. So Paul's making it clear through his first uh, few verses that because of our sin, uh, uh, we broke the relationship with God. We, we separated ourselves from God. God didn't move. God didn't change. He's always constant. His love is always consistent for us. But we chose to disobey. We chose to rebel. And because of which, we were objects of God's wrath. Not because he, he changed how he felt about us, but, because our, but we were covered in our sin. But look at verse 4. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive again with Christ, even when we were dead in our transgressions, for it is by grace you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus, in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace, expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. This is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God not by works, so that no one can boast. And then here's the verse I really want us to hone in on today, verse 10. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. The word in that verse 10 that I want us to focus on is the word handiwork. Uh, the Greek word there is poema, which is where we get the English word poem. Um, now, if you're not much into poetry, maybe poetry doesn't really do it for you, um, that might not be as significant for you, but if you do value the power of 
um, beautifully chosen words, which I do. I love words and like I enjoy poetry, love both uh, songwriting and powerful lyrics, and uh, that just really speaks to me. And if you have at least an appreciation for the the, the capacity to to pick right words, and that means something to you. But even if it doesn't, think about something else that uh, that you've seen with great design and great beauty and great brilliance, some sort of masterpiece, some sort of work of art. That's what the word poema means. And that's how you and I are described there in verse 10. We are God's poema. We are his handiwork, his craftsmanship, his masterpiece. Now, we were once that when we were created in his image, but we damaged it, we tainted it, we broke it, we, we stained it seemingly beyond repair. But in Christ Jesus, we have been set right again. We, have, we were created, but now we're being recreated in Christ Jesus. And what are we being recreated for? What is the purpose for our redesign? Well, it tells us there in verse 10 as well. We were recreated in Christ Jesus to do good works, to do the things that God has always intended for us to do that he wanted to do specifically through us. See, we said last Wednesday in the break room that you are you and there is no one else quite like you. And even when Christ comes alive in you, you will still be you. Just a better and, a, and ultimately, hopefully, a, a not hopefully, but the work that God will do, a best version of you. You know, your personality, your, your, your interest, your, um, your passions, your, your, your talents, um, your experiences through life um, that make up a unique uh, thumbprint, uh, unique fingerprint that that is that is unique to only you, and so um, those things that maybe you even once led you into sin or led you far away from God, God can take and redeem those and use them for His purposes that He's always had in mind for you to do. We used the example of Paul last week. We said that before he came to know Christ, uh, Paul was a brilliant, he's an intelligent, well-educated man. He was zealous. He was passionate. He was that type A personality. And he was as driven as somebody could possibly be to find anyone who loved Jesus and have them thrown in prison to try to squash this movement to follow him. After he came to know Jesus, th those parts of his personality were still there. But instead of being driven uh, to crush this mo movement of Jesus' followers, he was driven, he was passionate and zealous to see as many people uh, come to know Jesus as possible. See, God took that which was once, um, you know, Paul's greatest uh, weakness and as far as uh, who, the person he was becoming, uh, drawing farther and farther away from God, and he took that and used it to make a, a great strength and a tool that could be used uh, for his kingdom. God wants to do the same thing through you and me, but it only can happen when we surrender ourselves to this growth process, and that ultimately is what discipleship is all about. So if you couldn't join us last Wednesday, I pray that you'll make plans to be with us tomorrow night in the break room, either in person uh, or online. If you join us online, um, uh, when we're doing our small group time, I lead a little Facebook group of that um, online. And uh, so we'd love for you to be a part of that, participate, because we desperately need that. We need that community. Even though it's a little different than maybe what we would normally do under normal circumstances, we're still doing all we can to do it in a safe way. But that's how God intended us first to grow, and that is to grow with one another as we grow up together in Christ. Um, he's got good works in mind for you to do, and he's ready to reveal them to you if you'll let him. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, we thank you for coming. We thank you for, Lord, redeeming us. Uh, we thank you for the work that you're doing in us to remake us more and more into that person that you've always seen. Um, so, Lord, I pray that we would be willing uh, partners with you in this process, Lord, that um, we would allow you to do your work, that we would, um, Lord, that we'd submit to that, and so that when we um, sense your, your, your guidance and direction for the next steps we need to take um, for our own maturity, Lord, that we'd be willing to follow you wherever it takes us. Um, Lord, we love you. We thank you and we pray all these things in your name. Amen. God bless everyone.